Thank you for tuning in. This production is brought to you by The Dead Roots. If you haven't already, visit our website at thedeadroots.org. And to stay up to date or just to have a laugh, check out our Instagram at The Dead Roots. Universe. Welcome back to Sequoia and the Dead. Thank you for tuning in once again. Today we have Esteban. Hi. How are you doing? Again? Doing good. I'm not sure why I'm here. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me into your home. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful atmosphere, beautiful pets, most importantly. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, today we just got our brand new cat named Bones. He's a little black cat. We might yeah. show him on the Instagram or something at some point. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my gosh, she's so tiny. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. May I ask how old you are? I'm 31. 31. Such a boring age. What was the highest education level you have achieved or attempted? Uh some college. I have a uh a associates in communication. A lot of good that did me. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's kind of cool, though. Yeah, I guess. I, like all my talents, discernible talents, are with words. So I guess that kind of helped. It's just a really expensive piece of paper, though. You know, <laughs> I don't got to tell you. <laughs> I understand <Yeah>. that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a will? Uh, I think I do because I worked as a banker for Chase for a while. So I think I do have a will. Oddly enough. Well, you should definitely go check out this really cool website. I actually just made my will on. It's called Free Will. And it's a completely free software. This is not sponsored. Um, (laughs) But it is, it literally took me like 15, 20 minutes to get Mm. like all of my plans written out. And then it sent an email automatically to the people I set up to let them know what their positions were if that were to happen. And it's, it's awesome if you don't like know where you to track down your will at. Yeah. Like that's a great yeah. platform <laughs> yeah. that you can. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't they... know like how reliable it is, I guess, but it seems to have really, really good reviews and it was super easy to send me a little PDF and all yeah. that. Well, really I appreciate cool. the info. I thought you were going to wag your finger at me and be like, you don't know if you have a will, get on it. Oh, so, no, not at but, all. Yeah, that's no. a completely free personal will. decision. I'll check it out for yeah. sure. Thank I think you. it's like freewill.com or something like free that. Will. They should be sponsoring you. But, but, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i actually just found out today because maps was uh working with them uh yeah. in august which mm-hmm. was national make a will month apparently oh, yeah. i did not know sure. and then um i just got an email today from planned parenthood they're also doing a partnership with oh, them man. as well so they're really making big moves that's and awesome i'm super excited to... that sounds invaluable though like oh sort of service yeah absolutely it's a great service especially with the amount of crisis that we're in oh, like, right now yeah, I wonder how many people didn't have wills written out, you know, because I think with probably with Chase, I, I think what I probably did was uh, I think just fill out like the beneficiaries and who my money would go to if something happened, you know, so I'll have to, I'll have to get on that. Freewill.com. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, let me find my question here. There it is. What religion did you grow up in? Catholic, uh, really, really Catholic household. Uh, well, I w- we weren't really, we weren't that Catholic, but <laughs> I, but I was confirmed in the faith, and I was like pretty devout until I was about nineteen. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I was raised in a Christian, like Roman Catholic household. Mex, you know, traditional, <laughs> traditional me- Mexican household, oh, like yeah. a small town. Everyone believes the same thing. There's like three churches, you know. So. Yeah, I still, uh, my parents still practice the faith and everything, but it's not really my thing, Catholicism, but <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole subject, it's a whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, my whole family on my mom's side is, like, Catholic, and I think my brother and I's generation is the only ones that did not get baptized, like, even my mom's baptized and everything, oh, like, man. they went hard, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was fully, fully raised, like, like, in the night, like, Fully confirmed in the Catholic faith, so I was not like I wasn't like super down for it, but that was I was like I was an altar boy, uh, like I was just really involved in the church up until like I was nineteen and went to college and started googling stuff. I mean, like, hmm, 
this isn't, <laughs> you know, once you get out of that little, you know, that little think tank, you're like, ah, there, there are other beliefs out there. Cause <laughs> yeah. because whenever everyone around you thinks the same thing in those small little country towns, like it's, it's, you don't get exposed to anything else, you know? So that was just kind of my default setting for about 19 years. Do I identify with religion now? No, I, I would like to get more in touch with spirituality in general, but I don't, as I get older and I guess the farther left I get, but it's just from the world that I observe, uh, me and religion are just, they're just like oil and water. They really just don't mix. Well, at, at least, uh, Christianity in general, just older I get yeah. much to my parents chagrin, like I'm. I'm just getting, I just don't, I've never experienced anything that made me, because if I was, if there was like an, if I had an experience or something like a come to Jesus moment or, you know, uh, then I would be more inclined to believe that. But otherwise, as just praying and me talking to myself, you know, now that, now that I look at it. But uh, yeah, so yeah, the that's answer very is, spiritual for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I suppose I'm try. I, I hope to experience. I, I have friends that I'm getting closer to that are really like into, like just really traditional Mexican like magic and witchcraft and things like that. I have a friend who's like she's just a, a little witch and she's awesome. Like I've I didn't know that there was like whole stores dedicated just to like Spanish sort of not 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 brujeria necessarily, but I can't think of the word. But she I would just go and she would buy a bunch of different types of incense. Like there's so much out there that I was like, what you know, like <laughs> light this candle if you want to make more money. I'm like, what? Like she was like, <laughs> uh, she had me buy her some statues, and I was just like. Yo, know, I don't know what any of this shit means. I mean, it rules, but I don't know. But she's really, that's her, she's really in touch with her, with her Mexican roots and her spirituality in that. Like, that's just who she is as a person in general. She's always like, can you take me to get some flowers uh, for the spirits? You know, like, I need this specific type of rum for the spirits. I'm like, oh, cool. I, I don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just like, okay, you believe in this. So I, I, I'm into it. That's fine. That's awesome. Yeah. I totally, I love those stores actually because I follow uh, Santa Muerte. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, exactly. like, I have my little pendant yes, here and everything. Exactly. Like, so, yeah. that's like, I wouldn't say I'm like religious in that regard, yeah. but I follow her and yeah. her beliefs and everything, especially yeah. with my experience yeah. with that and all of that. Yeah. It's definitely like a whole different culture because there's like the yeah. Rujari, if yeah. I'm saying that right. And then there's like, this deep rooted underside of Catholicism yeah, yeah. and everything like that. And a lot of those coincide yeah, super, yeah. super interestingly. Yeah, my, like it, it was weird that like within the Catholic faith, it's like on one hand, like, Oh, witchcraft, but also they like practice, practice their own form of witchcraft. Like my, yeah. my grandma with the egg in the cup thing, <laughs> and the, you know, like I do oh not understand it. Eyes in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. 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 But my, my grandma practiced some sort of, uh, witchcraft that i i think it it passed with her i don't think anyone in my family still is still practicing so that's why whenever i i hang out with that particular friend like a lot of these things come back to him like oh i i've seen i've i've smelled this scent before i've done this and i'll ask like what's this what's the difference between this sage and this sage this you know like it's uh there's so much to it and that's something that's kind of daunting to where i'm like where do i start in that sort of thing is there a book you know I, I don't know. there yeah. are books though it's yeah. super cool like they got you set up they're like come this way bro. come this way those big paper things from the 70s is that what you're talking about no, I, the only way i'm able to even get anything done now is either via kindle or like audiobooks otherwise i can't oh, just yeah. sit down and read a book like for too long whereas if i'm i'm since i'm driving up from san antonio to denver i would listen to a whole audiobook on the way you know what was, kind of books do you listen to uh lately just a lot of stephen king because i'm a nice. stephen king fanboy uh actually even just just recently got this this tat this christine tattoo uh not not only just because i love the the story of like christine and everything like that but also my mother's name is christine too so it's like a tribute to like stephen king and my mother i love them both so much uh <laughs> That's so, so beautiful i love yeah, that yeah so i've been doing that and i've been reading uh 
uh, biographies too. The uh, the Matthew McConaughey one is actually really, really good. Really? It's really just feels like you're being chilling with Matthew McConaughey for like six hours, man. Like him just telling you stories of what's going on and everything. Like his his first acting gig and how he kind of fell into it in Austin. Like it was just a thing that he was that he wasn't really trying for it. He just ended up happening for him and he kind of once he got into it he wrote down all these goals for himself and everything and uh that one's incredible and i also been reading uh the i just finished uh over the top by jvn like jonathan van ness from queer eye that oh. one that one was really good it was he's Damn. so effortlessly funny that so those those are really highly entertaining things and since i go to like a lot of shows and sometimes it's just nice to have to have a little break from music and just listen to somebody talk about their life you know for once instead of me, me hearing me talk <laughs> since i'm alone <laughs> a lot i just talk to myself all the time <laughs> but yeah yeah if it keeps you sane you know yeah, yeah, for sure <laughs> Have you ever done uh, psychedelics for religious or spiritual purposes? No, but I really want to, not for, just for mental health purposes. A lot of people that I know uh, take it for for just depression and whatnot, Mm -hmm. and they describe it as like a hard reset for the brain, which sounds dope because, ah, man, like I just, you know, I suffer from depression, anxiety a lot, even though like I feel like I have a great life, my... I don't know. My I just my chemical imbalance just you know tells me different. <laughs> so I, I would like to I would like to do that in the future. But no, the answer is no. I haven't done that yet. It's such a great experience when used for that, and like yeah. when you're when you're mentally prepared for yeah. that as well, it puts you into such a nice state for that neuroplasticity to take in because that's like the rewiring of your brain in a sense and it's so cool that it's like getting backed up so much more by science and everything too it's like yeah bro we've known (laughs) known, we've been known and y'all just figuring out and that's the same thing with we like people have been fucking talking about the the healing qualities of of cannabis for (laughs) years and just recently study show is like what do you mean study show like the uh yeah no but yeah that's a whole other topic too oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, yeah but yeah, actually i completely while i was on my trip because i mainly aside from seeing that metal show i also just wanted to like get away and like be alone for a while and i had actually planned on doing shrooms while i was out here but then i forgot because i was like yeah i want to trip out in the mountains and then like so much planning goes into something like this that i just forgot that part of the plan <laughs> which is fine it's still i could still do it at home you know but there's always next time when you're in Colorado. yeah too, that'll so. probably maybe that'll be my number because i feel like i want to i want to at least microdose soon just to just to see how that goes you know oh yeah. yeah it's really good to have like a schedule too if you really want like a specific thing to set in like if you really want to spend like some time focusing on easing anxiety like setting aside a week with like a specific schedule with like ritualistic things like yeah. i microdosed for a month uh to get through some ptsd yeah, yeah and so i was almost isolated the entire month because wow. i was dog sitting and everything so i was by myself 24 yeah. 7 wow. like it was a really great time because i got to do yoga at a specific time and then i did like an immersion therapy with myself on tuesdays yeah and would like kind of like not try to trigger myself but like yeah. kind of reintroduce some things that used to freak me out yeah. and then Thursdays I did like a self portrait just yeah. to get re-in with like my body and everything like yeah. that. And like that whole month, like I was back and forth between therapists and off medication yeah. and blah 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 blah. And that helped more yeah. than anything. Yeah. Like that's it good. definitely is like up to like your tolerance and what you're ready to experience too to always take it super slow oh man yeah that's that's so impressive that you're able to to like isolate like that for 30 days and have it actually benefit you like for me that's actually part of the 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 reason that i wanted to like be on this trip in general is just to get more comfortable like having my own having my own company you know and being alone with myself and my thoughts because like i pick on myself mentally all the time like like i'll just have like um just these like invasive thoughts you know and everything's are going well and then it's like like that shitty part of me is like like you're fucking fooling everyone buddy and you know like it, it's very weird so the fact that you were and i don't like i think if i was alone for 30 days i w- i i think that would like damage me so the fact that you were able to you know like it only benefit you that's incredible i mean that gives me that's that's inspiring well, maybe maybe well, i'll try comes, one day like i said like it's what you're ready for too it's yeah. like 
I nothing else was working. I was the reason I why I think I was able to do that because I can't even be alone with myself anymore. Like yeah. a day at a time, I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like yeah. during that time, I was in such a state of like desperate need. Yeah. Like nothing else was working. Yeah. And I just was like, I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah. And I had some of the most intense meditations yeah. I've ever had. Like really a major breakthrough. And then at the very end of the month, I took uh I think it's a legend's journey. Mm-hmm. So I took seven grams of mushrooms because I, I, m- mushrooms are my choice. Like, yeah. I would choose that over acid for yeah. anything like that. Yeah. But um, I took the seven grams and pitch blacked my room. I don't know what that's called, but like I made sure no electricity was in there, yeah. like blocked out all the windows, everything. Wow. I couldn't even see my hand. And yeah. I did it in the middle of the night, let the household know and yeah. was like, I'm doing this. I need it to be dead silent. So I spent like the next like 14 hours or something like yeah, that, like yeah. alone in this room. Just like it was so life changing. I yeah. had a lot of healing visuals come through and yeah. even like the spirit animal of the individual I was trying to recover from mm-hmm. visited me, mm-hmm. which was like really, really intense. So this beautiful wolf showed up and yeah. she like curled up next to me and yeah. she literally like said to me in visuals and things because you know <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah like don't associate with me with what he has done i am sorry on his behalf yeah. like literally and like yeah. that just like whew, yeah. like yeah it was like this huge weight off of my shoulders in just that one moment yeah but yeah that's like, beautiful. That's genuinely beautiful. It makes me want to try it more. I just, I have my anxiety so bad that it's like, I'm like, oh no, what if something bad happens? But that's how all of life works. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you got your ups and your downs yeah. and everything, but like definitely, definitely take it slow. Like, yeah, just yeah. like those little things that you can do to make your space prepared for something yeah. like that too. Like that's think, all great. Yeah. That's, that's another thing. I was like, what, I want everything to be perfect, but that's not how life works ever. Like nothing goes smoothly ever. <laughs> so, uh, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to take it slow and kind of make my, have a little space that makes me comfortable, you know? So I'll definitely, I'll definitely bug you about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. My first room, be like, tell me. Absolutely. Me. Bro. <laughs> I got you. I freaking got awesome. you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Have you ever thought about how long you would like to live? Yeah, uh, I don't like the thought of not having like full bodily autonomy and like I don't I don't want to live past a certain age. Like, like that's something that maybe like anything past eighty just sounds excessive. You know, like I'm thinking, mm, like I would think anywhere I'd like to die in my seventies, or because it just sounds like kind of. I feel like there's worse things than death, you know, like I feel like being like 97, not being able to like looking like a little goblin, like having to, you know, that doesn't sound great to me, (laughs) to be honest. So I feel like once I my goal is like to if I have I obviously want to have children and once I see their grandchildren grow up and everything and be a grandpa. And then once I get to a certain age and be like, all right, I want you to remember me like this, not as some like you know some just disheveled like gaunt thing that you know can't i want you to remember me the way that i am so i'm hoping i'm thinking 80 tops because anything else sounds nah (laughs) no 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 thank you yeah there's a certain amount of pride that comes with being young yeah and everything and that pride kind of wears at your dignity so i've heard as you get older i just rather like (laughs) I have such a great life and it's not even that I'm not even having that much fun. Like it's not even like sometimes <laughs> it was over, like, let's wrap this shit up. You know, like when is it we got to do I got to do this. I got to pay bills until I die. That is so whack, you know, <laughs> like it's the worst. But, you know, like either way. So, yeah, I, I I guess it is sort of prideful. Maybe I'll be 80 and be like, please, Lord, don't take me. But even there's on certain days we're now at 31. I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm ready, you know, <laughs> to know what he says to no one in particular. <laughs> he says to no one in particular. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen a body or genuine remains? Uh, I mean, I have I have been to a lot of funerals, like just my family. It's a lot of, you know, like my great-grandparents passing. I don't think I've ever seen 
I think I've seen like a few bodies like in like accidents. I think there was a time where we saw some people just like, you know, cause you know, like people don't, I feel like people don't take driving as seriously as they should, you know? So, and some people, I feel like they didn't receive proper education. So we're driving these big death machines everywhere. Right. And so it, it's just, I, I've seen, bodies thrown along but it's it's not something anything that's too personal it's just like oh man that's that's whack you know like i, I don't know so whereas with uh with with family uh with family it's it's it is someone see, seeing someone uh, you know and not i've had i think three grandparents pass away that i could remember like their funerals distinctly you know so uh otherwise like like just remains no no just just pretty much just the full catholic you know the the theater of catholic funerals you know where there's like it's not just a funeral there's like there's like a, a wake a rosary uh you know few, like there's like it's like a four part thing it's like <laughs> yo i do not i do not want that when i pass i don't want that 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 whole thing like just throw me in the trap no just, <laughs> just, just throw me like just uh, i really all all i want is to be cremated put me in an urn and then like play a show like have like been the people that can't play anything just talk a good memory like say a good memory or a good or the way i impacted your life you know i don't want that whole like like a rosary bro i don't know have you been to a rosary no i haven't it is so excessive like so besides being like artistically like beautiful like jewelry like mm-hmm. every bead means something different yeah. and like you just say those prayers a whole bunch for like an hour uh and it's just oh not yeah it is so excessive. It was so, super so, excessive. So, so in, any time that's like, all right, the rosary's here. I'm like skipping that part. You know, like I'll like, skip that because it's like, it's just so like, bro. Like it's that's the thing is like funerals are just they're like like theater, you know, <laughs> and not my favorite form of theater. Not fun theater. Just you know, it's like it's like a whole. Ri- it's really ritualistic. You know, the whole thing. It's kind of like bizarre. Like that we go through all this just for one person passing, which you know. I mean, it's cool, but also, like, dude, like, how much did that cost? How much time and effort goes into this? It just seems, it, like, it just seems excessive, <laughs> you know? Why do you think it, like, seems excessive? I just want to ask a deeper question. I'm just curious. Oh, oh, it's just, like, I really don't feel like we matter all that much, you know? Like, well, I mean, like, we're just, like, a grain of sand in this big desert, and it's kind of, like... You're going to, every time somebody passes, you're going to like, there's three different ceremonies. Uh, and then it's just, it just seems to be a, it, almost like it's like, and, and it's not fun, you know, like yeah. none of, none of it is, it's all just sorrowful. And like, even, um, the recently the person that I had, a uh, my bassist in the band that I play in, he, he passed away. And even just doing the, the, I only went to two parts of it. There were there were about four or five. It was just so much, and there's so much grief. And I guess in a lot of people, kind of work their way through it. But to me, it's like, dude, this is like, let's just let's just wrap this up. Let's let's like end it on a high note. It just seems like it's almost like people are like dragged through emotional barbed wire for a bunch of different ceremonies, you know, like they're, that's a it, really good way of putting it. Yeah. It's just like, there's so much. And like you said, I don't mean to be like disrespectful, but I, I know that whenever I, whenever I pass, I'm like, don't make people, don't make people take time off. And like, and like just one, one ceremony, like it doesn't have to be a big, like people like you don't have to hire a staff and cause you know, like just the whole funeral industry in general, how much it costs to die. It's just, yeah. it's just like heinously capitalistic towards like, yo, this is, it's like a big event, but not a fun one. <laughs> you know? So that's why I say it's excessive. It's just like, this really long ritual. It's just like, uh, I, I don't want to put anybody through that quite frankly, because <laughs> I've been put through that a lot. And I'm like, this is not chill. You this know, is but, not uh, chill. this is not it. I'm straight up not having a good time. <laughs> you know, so yeah, that's, that's why I think it's excessive. That's a fantastic answer. I, I like all the it was very dynamic <laughs> answer. <laughs> I'm glad I could explain it because I was like, oh, is that is it not excessive? But I, I just I think it is. I'm like, uh, because I feel like I've had to go to a lot of funerals in my day, and every time it's like, 
let's just get to the like there's just a certain part that i feel is necessary and a lot of it is just you know like let's get to the meat and potatoes of it but there's a lot of other little little like pain side dishes that you have to get through in order to get to the final okay ah uh, you know it's something i always leave with like a, a really big sense of relief like oh I'm so glad that's over. Like I'm like I've because I've you've already been grieving for a long time, yeah. and now it's like okay. But I don't know, I don't know. So I'm just always I'm always like relieved after a funeral. I'm not you know there's not really any closure, and it's just like afterwards, like oh, I'm so glad that's over. Because quite frankly, that's always how I've always felt about church in general. You know, no no kid like my parents would take me to like the Catholic services, like in the Spanish services. And I didn't even speak Spanish, so I would just sit there in church being like, like, okay, like, I am in the presence of God. And then, honestly, the coolest thing about that is, like, the Spanish choir's way doper than the English. English, like, the music is actually way more fun and, like, exciting, whereas, like, oh, like the hymns that, like, in, like, English, like, they're the most boring, saddest, you know, one bread, one body. Like, it's just such a bummer to have to sing, sing like, uh, you know, they're just, they're such sad songs, despite the fact that it's such a rich organization and there's so much, like, it's like a building made of gold. It's like you're, you're sitting in a palace and then singing the saddest shit, you know. But, uh, okay, sorry, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> no, I freaking love that. <laughs> what are your thoughts on cultures that exhume the dead for ritual? Oh, that's tight. Like, I mean, I, I mean, it's not tight, <laughs> but I mean, that that is that is weird, but I don't know, that's... I don't think it's any weirder than what we do in general. Like, I don't think it's any weirder that we, you know, like we, there's more dead people on earth than there are alive ones. Like there's just so many dead people underground, you know? So I think that's a bizarre ritual in, in general, like burying your dead like that. I, I think that's weird in general, like, and like pay, making, like it costs at least like 10,000 to die, you know, like it's just so expensive. So I don't really pass. I mean, that's, that's weird, but it's just like culturally the way that we express like death and everything like that. It's like, it's all fuck. It's all weird. You know, yeah. I like, haven't they got their thing. We got ours. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it's like people and everyone's, this is the right way. I was like, all right, that's what everybody thinks about everything ever. So it's like, okay, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't judge, but I would like to, I would like to do more. I would like to know more about that. So, uh, I will, I'll bug you about that too. Send me a text like, yo, hit me with the, with the Wikipedia link or something to, to this uh, particular tribe or whatever. But that's a good question. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different cultures that do so many different things. It's freaking wild. And there's this new, like, this is weird to use this word for this, but like a trend yeah. when dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that people are like burying themselves in a sack with the, tree bulb oh, or man. something yeah, that, i don't I, know if I think the bulb cool. is the right word for yeah, that yeah. but like they're like in fetal positions yeah. like you're in fetal position in the womb so you should be in fetal position when you die i'm like yeah. but you weren't in fetal position when you died yeah. so okay. but like that's that's another conversation that's, that's weird. yeah <laughs> but it's, it's like kind of a neat thing because yeah. it'll actually use the body to like grow bigger and everything yeah. like that yeah. and like because it's it's kind of fertilizer yeah the, if you like yeah, i don't know the, the from ashes uh, like uh, like dust to dust you know so i i i had a, remember there was this band that actually reached out to me that wanted me to front them uh out of austin called uh tibetan sky burial is what they were called and i was like oh that's a that's a that's a mouthful for a name and but i was like looking into tibetan sky burial i was like that's that's what, that's crazy shit i can't even explain it like it's like I don't know. I don't want to. It's like people dying like on a mountain and just like being out there. And it's like, it's crazy. But I, I do want to do more research on because I, you know, I've just so once again, like everybody around me has like the the really basic like the Catholic funeral. So I've never been to anything different, you know, kind of like most of the weddings that I've been to have just been traditional Catholic weddings. It's just the rituals always the same, you know, so it'd be cool if, to see something different every now and then, you know. There's a lot to learn. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's a little overwhelming when yeah. you really think about it. It's like what you're saying with this spirituality. It's like that, but with, like, death. It's yeah. like, what? It's like, even, like, birth has all these crazy rituals, too. Like, on the flip side of that, like, I my, uh, <laughs> my mom's boyfriend's daughter mm -hmm. worked in the NICU for a while. And mm -hmm. then 
was getting trained to do births. I don't know what that's yeah. a midwife, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, there's like a there's I that always trips me out too, like the whole like the concept of a midwife or a doula or like all of that. Like that's that's crazy to me. I I those these things that I find out about later on or I'm like, wait, that's a thing? Like you just don't really yeah, learn about that right? until it's time to have a kid or something. You're like, oh, that's something I could do. You know, that's <laughs> someone that does that for a living. That's cool, but also very stressful. Oh, my God. Yeah. She had a whole class that she had to go to yeah. that was specifically on, like, different birthing rituals. So, like, if it's, like, an I, I don't want to be disrespectful, so yeah. excuse me for any misconception. <laughs> this is just my paraphrasing. Yeah. Um like for if it was like an Asian family, like there was a certain temperature of water that they mm-hmm. needed to have on rags, to like wrap their feet with. Oh, wow. Like some Hispanic families, depending on like the religion and whatnot and where they're from, I guess. Yeah. There's like a different temperature of water that you mm-hmm. have to use, and they have to be at like a certain elevation, oh, wow. or like the, the feet have to be at a certain elevation. Like yeah. there's all these like little things that they have to be ready for culturally while they're in that space, and it's like, damn, like if that isn't like cultural training, I don't know what fucking is. Oh, like, God. <laughs> yeah, that's so much. I don't know. A lot of these things are, I never thought, I was like, I never thought about it like that, but no, I've never thought about those sort of things. That's, that's nuts. It's a lot of details in life and it's, there's, it's overwhelming. Dude. Yeah. So why? Like why? (laughs) Why? (laughs) That's excessive. (laughs) I told, I told my fan, like, it was like, uh, you know, I have these conversations with like, you know, if you ever go to family gathering, there's, like, the uncles and aunts that you have nothing in common with, like, at all. Like, I just don't know what to talk about. I don't play golf or I don't play horseshoes or whatever, you know. So I'm just normally like, yo, hey. Like, I'm just like, yo, why didn't you tell me this life was going to suck so bad when I was a kid? Like, just joking yeah. around, but it's it's true. Like, it's like my parents had my parents had the audacity to, like, just pluck a soul into existence and be like, fucking pay bills. Like, oh, man, it's so <laughs> whack. Why couldn't y'all just... Be safe. <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> and now I have to, now I have just like a, a painful existence for the, the you know, the foreseeable future. So, mm. <laughs> you know, that's, it seems sort of irresponsible, but, you know, but, because I, I want kids, but I don't know. The world's on fire right now. We'll, <laughs> maybe we'll wait. Maybe we'll wait for a little while. But I love it. <laughs> you want know? kids for the world. Like, literally, though. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. It seems it like. so it, messed up. It seems so, like, because it was like, it's for like four or five years my parents have been bug- had been bugging me about like having kids. So I was like, oh, I don't want to have kids while Donald Trump is president. And I was like, oh, I don't want to have kids now that there's like a plague upon mankind, you know, like, <laughs> and what's going to be next? It'd be like, oh, I don't want to have kids because the aliens invaded and who knows you know, like, <laughs> how many disasters are going to be i'm going to be 57 be like no i'm not ready for kids yet bro you know <laughs> the water wars are you know, the water wars. we're running out of water you know which is probably inevitably going to be a thing oh uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's the whole like i don't know if you ever watched like the big short and um the guy, guy who actually he like betted on the collapse of the of the mortgage industry of the housing like the the housing market he foresaw it and everybody thought he was crazy and he invested in the short making sure that they were basically like betting on this big company to fail like the entire industry to fail and either way it he made a ton of money off of it uh and now he doesn't do in- investing anymore the only thing that he invests in is water <laughs> you know oh that's God. what he has his money wrapped up in water so there's going to be a point where water's going to be a thing <laughs> you know water scarcity is going to be at least a bigger thing than it oh, is yeah. now you know well it's already causing a lot of like food scarcity uh, too like all the fish are changing and hybridizing <laughs> and not living there anymore at all like yeah. they just yeah. Or the oil got to them, or the trash oh, got to dude. them. Or yeah, like, it's like we're just like we know what we should do to fix this, but there's too much money wrapped into it. We can't can't do that shit, you know. Which <laughs> it's kind of it's like real. It's kind of bizarre when you think of a sit back and think about all the things that we could be doing to not not only make the world a better place, but just so we can live longer. Or you know, and we're just like nah, it's not, you know, like nope. <laughs> Too many people depend on this money on the on the gravy train, so we can't just can't can't stop can't stop. And and I feel like at what point are we gonna be like, yo, <laughs> you know? Because at what point is like, yo, we cannot sustain this for that much longer? Because it seems like there's studies out there, but it's like 
Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a whole thing. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. Well, I don't know how we didn't like really look at this differently, especially after COVID. Like, dolphins were back in Italy, bro. Mm. Like, mm. turtles were back. Yeah. And, and like parts parts of Costa Rica and shit yeah. like that. It's yeah. like, did we not see what how good the world did without us? Yeah. So, like, yeah. And we're just oh, back on it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, it's like we didn't learn anything. No. Like, I, unfortunately, like I get it because there's a lot of fatigue surrounding that. Because I know since I based my entire personality around like traveling and going to shows and shit, that once I stopped, I was like, what? Like, what do I do now? Like, you know, what am I gonna do? Meditate? Uh, I, I really don't. I don't know how to meditate. I have never, I've never meditated in my life. I should probably like Google that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Google but yeah, no, I was just like, yeah. And after now, it's like I don't know. I, I understand why people are kind of because it's tiresome, man. Being in like living through like a, a major part of history, it's exhausting. You know, I don't want, I don't want to do it anymore. But here yeah. we are. Yeah. Oh my god. We got wars all over, like civil wars, just like hidden here and there. It's just like, well, yeah, yeah. I don't. I tell people, it's like, dude, doesn't it feel like the end of the world? This is so the end of the world, but it's gonna take a long time for us to just reach that conclusion. We're just slowly, like, you know, we're just like trudging along towards the end. And mm, I don't know, maybe we could take a, st- a step back or two, slow it down a bit. But mm, we we have it. We have the technology. We have the science, but we just don't. We just want to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's too hard, too inconvenient. It's <laughs> too inconvenient. Exactly. No, <laughs> completely. Oh my god! Like that. I, I was reading really briefly, like some practically BuzzFeed article. You know, and it was like, oh well, California is saying that the new pork laws to actually make that pigs have a good life because yeah. like they're incredibly intelligent animals, first yeah. of all, but like they're being treated like shit. Yeah. Second, and they like pass this bill. It's like, oh well, they gotta be protected and cared yeah. for and whatnot, and. The pork industry is like, no! <laughs> oh my god, no! It's what like, is this going to do to my overhead? I have to make sure it has a good life. Like, look at all these jobs I've yeah. like, spl- 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 supplied. It's like, they will yeah. be jobs elsewhere. Yeah. There are jobs elsewhere. Like in solar, wind power, or yeah. cleaning the water. Like, there's... Yeah, no, totally. Oh, <laughs> pigs are so cute. I would like one, but if, let's, but they don't stay little. They get really big regardless. And may, one day when I have land, I would like a pig. But until then, like, I I would love a pet pig, but also it means I'd probably have to stop eating pork because it seems kind of, like, insensitive, you know? Yeah. It's like... <laughs> No, no, yeah. What what a sack of shit, right? Be like, he can't own a pig because then he'll have to stop eating pigs, and that's just like once again too inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. Yeah, you want me to have to get the impossible of me? Nah, no way. Fucking turkey bacon, suck it. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Being a pig would be like a bummer. That would be. That would be not good. There was a, the school I went to, we had pigs at our farm. Yeah. And so in middle school, every year we would get the pigs at our yeah. farm Aww. and we'd raise them from the little guys. And I was always there on like the oh. delivery day. I was so yeah. excited about these pigs. And so I was vegetarian for like yeah. 12 years almost. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. And I'm 22. So that's like forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Oh my gosh, I got to put on like sunscreen on these pigs. Yeah. <laughs> and Aww. oh my god, they were so cute because we didn't want them to sunburn because they were yeah. so little. And then and they can't sweat or nothing. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. throughout the year, we'd raise them. And then at the very end, yeah. we would take them to the slaughterhouse <gasps> and have a whole school ritual surrounding this meal we were going to have from oh, the man. pigs that we knew. Wow, that's beautiful. And but... it was like a really great yeah. acknowledgement yeah. of where our food comes from, yeah. but also like a generally beautiful yeah. like process to begin with. Yeah, but I true. do gotta say we are running out of time. <laughs> I talk so much. I I'm love so it, dude. No, <laughs> this is a great conversation. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you guys for tuning in, whether you're on the podcast or on the video, Instagram, Instagram video, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for next episode. Live spicy. We at the Dead Roots want to make sure everyone is comfortable on our platform. Make sure to be kind and considerate to others who use our platform as well. And as always, have fun.
Thank you so much and stay rooted.